So one question I have for you is what advice would you have for people who are considering going this direction as a career path? Yeah. So like how your person that you hired recently took the initiative, I, I've seen some people get discouraged because they're not getting beaten down with job offers anymore, or mm -hmm. they're realizing it's a lot of work and it's going to be a job doing mm -hmm. a career change because that's what it is. But it, it's very important that if you decide you want to do this, take it serious, wake up every day, treating it like a job doesn't mean you have to be on every single day. But you need to make an effort. You need mm -hmm. to show up, go to these events when you're there. Try and go out of your comfort zone. Like you're now at this event. In order for somebody to get a job, they need to be aware of you mm -hmm. in order to offer you a job. Basic marketing. If you don't let people know of your services, how are people going to say, hey, I want to hire you or I want to buy your services from you? So it's very much you need to take this very seriously, showing up to these different events, but also in your free time, it doesn't have to be a lot of time. I remember back in 2015, 2016, when I started studying for my admin certification, I would in between phone calls in a contact center, I would just take index cards. Trailhead wasn't that developed at the time. I did use it for a few things, but it still wasn't the most amazing thing back then. It's gotten really powerful yeah. now. But just between phone calls, I would do a Google search. I would look up different terms. I would write it down. I would study. And then I would go for the exam. And I thankfully passed that one on the first time. But it all boils down to you need to take it serious. And if you put in hard work, you'll be rewarded. I love that. I love that. And you mentioned the networking aspect of it, going to conferences. I actually met you at a conference. That was a great time. Do you have any conferences on the horizon? Yes, I wanted to go to Midwest Dream In. It might not work out this year, but I am going to Dreamforce. So I want to be very clear, people listening, you don't have to go to Dreamforce like, to get a job in Salesforce. It does help a lot, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like the ultimate like networking conference for Salesforce professionals. I am going to Dreamforce. If you're listening to this, I'd recommend going to like Trailblazer community groups, finding your local user group, finding a Dream In. A Dream In event conference ticket is what? 50 to 250 dollars somewhere in there if you volunteer they often give it to you for free and volunteering could just be checking people in or stuffing bags with swag or even finding a salesforce saturday that's free just going yeah. to a coffee shop and talking to people about salesforce but i am going to dreamforce and i think it's super valuable to do yeah i would actually say that for new people coming in looking for jobs the smaller events might be more valuable than Dreamforce. Dreamforce is amazing. It's a blast. It's such an event, such an atmosphere. But those smaller events, you have a lot of opportunities to have deep conversations and build relationships that I think, especially if you're on a budget and you can go to these free events, this is a good way to start to network. Exactly. I think Dreamforce is a great investment, but you don't need it to mm -hmm. start out. It, it does help if you do go to it, don't get me wrong. But there's something about that intimate, like learning people, like building a relationship with them. And then if they have a job, they're going to remember somebody locally that they've met a few times at a coffee shop who's looking than somebody they've never met before. Yeah, totally. Okay, we'll give you one more question. We've got a, a lot of great conversation. Okay, so now we're going to look at this, not from the perspective of a potential Salesforce career, but from a business standpoint, you've worked in a lot of different businesses on Salesforce in all different scenarios. If you're a business just getting into Salesforce, how should you be thinking about this? And is there a different way to think about it if you're, say, a medium-sized business versus a large business? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so just to set the stage for different businesses I've worked in and I've configured or engineered or whatever their Salesforce instance, it's been in the healthcare industry, the video game industry, the cybersecurity industry, the financial industry, and now I'm in the real estate industry. <laughs> Is that all of them? That's pretty much all of them. There's, <laughs> there's a lot. It's <laughs> such a great tool that's entirely customizable to your business needs. Chances are, if you have a need in business, you're not necessarily reinventing the wheel here. Somebody has probably done it before at mm. this point in time, unless you're launching an entirely new product, but then your operations are still pretty much the same on how you recognize revenue and reconcile your books and all that. 
But anyways, I'd recommend first talking to Salesforce, of course, and no Salesforce will happily sell you the licenses to get going, but no Salesforce is not a one and done just because you bought this software. doesn't mean all your problems are going to be solved. Mm -hmm. Um, You need to understand what you want to get out of it. And so that goes into what's the KPIs you need to hit? What are your pain points? What are the capabilities you want to mature? And then once you really understand like your business vision and strategy, then you can start to identify, this is what I want to focus on from a very high like executive vision. And then you can really start targeting Salesforce to be, oh, I have an issue with my marketing funnel. So I should be expanding lead management, have a conversation with your Salesforce account rep, be like, hey, What do you have that can address these? Because they have something, I promise you that, and not to ramble them all off. And chances are they'll recommend you something and then you should consider a Salesforce partner or bring in resources. I'm sure you would love people to renew Salesforce partners every single year. Um, But uh, there's cost differences when you hire a full-time employee versus when you hire a contractor. There's tax differences. They have people sometimes on bench and there's a faster ramp time because they're already like vetted professionals, but you should also consider full-time resources, not to bash it. I guess talk to Salesforce, figure out what you want and consider a partner and full-time resources. Gotcha. Figure out what it is you're trying to accomplish. And based on all the industries that you listed off and what both of us know about Salesforce, you could accomplish basically whatever you want to as a business on Salesforce. And then how are you going to accomplish it? And I think us Both on the call at the same time is a good sort of representation of your options. There are a lot of good reasons to invest in internal talent and build up an internal team like you guys are doing. And I think that's amazing. Just to plug Banjax, we're a third-party consultancy. People can call us for extra help. And oftentimes, if people are trying to accomplish big enough projects, they may need to do both. They mean to have internal resources like you could be in a position to be contracting out. And so... I think it all depends on the circumstances, but yeah, thank you so much, Zach, for your perspective and thanks so much for joining the pod. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Drew. This was a lot of fun. All right. Well, have a good day. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.